Hey, Kate Hartley here, and today I'm talking about pelvic floor exercises with relation to prolapse, avoiding prolapse, and just becoming aware of actually how to do the correct pelvic floor exercises. Now, I've got to start this. I am no medical expert. I'm a woman. I am postmenopausal. I do a lot of health and fitness. I have frequently peed my pants not fully, but you know, when we have a sneeze, when we have a cough, the first time happened to me on the trampoline. If you watch my first um, in this series about prolapse and pelvic floor, I explain about it more in there. Um, but this is something that happens to a lot of women. And yes, one of the main reasons why you would have that pelvic floor weakness uh, is generally linked to childbirth, but it can also be genetics, it can be obesity, it can be a dysfunction of biomechanics within the body. It can be several different reasons. So um, I'm today, I want to try and keep this as bite-sized as possible because I know long videos get really boring um, and actually we don't have time to watch them all. So today it's literally just focusing on how you can become more attuned to what your pelvic floor is doing. So I've been practicing this. Now, this is a video I wanted to do a little while ago, but I wanted to do it to myself first so that I could actually come on today and say it works and it absolutely does work it's something you're going to have to practice two or three times a day be consistent with but I promise you if you do that is you're going to notice remarkable improvements so first of all just very briefly because I, again I went over this in the previous video pelvic floor is like a hammock of connective tissue and muscles that support the lower part of our body they hold the, the the bladder in the uterus the vagina and the rectum in and when you have a prolapse it's either the bladder or part of the vagina or the uterus or part of the rectum the bowel that comes through and depending on where you've got that that weakness will depend upon what that prolapse is to know if you've got a prolapse you might find you've just got this unexplained constant lower back ache it might be that you can feel the bulge you might not be able to feel it with your hands but you might have that sense of heaviness and pressure and aching in between your legs particularly if you've been standing for a long period of time or you may have a prolapse that you can actually physically see that's protruding out of the vaginal wall um, it, the prolapses are in different stages if you have got the bulge and you can see something then definitely definitely go either to your health advisor if it was me I would book straight into a pelvic floor physiotherapist without a shadow of a doubt I wouldn't even wait for the doctor's appointment I would just go straight to the pelvic floor or a women's physiotherapist because they can give you they can diagnose the sort of prolapse you've got and they can give you some exercises or strategies to help you forward because in some instances, particularly if the prolapse is advanced, it might be that you need to have surgery in order to correct it. It might be that you're, you'd prefer to avoid surgery, but you have a pessary and a pessary comes in different shapes and sizes. We're all different shapes and sizes and a pessary for one woman may not work for another woman. Um, you know, going back a few years in the, the days of diaphragms uh, that we used as contraception, a pessary is pretty similar to that. And it's something that you might just use when you're running or when you're exercising. It might be something that you leave in more long term. But, you know, when you're to that degree of, of, of prolapse and needing that degree of help, then you, I would, if it were me, I would definitely get in touch with a, a pelvic floor physiotherapist because they can give you the specific actions that are going to help you, um, you know, help you overcome that issue whether that's by surgery or a combination of lifestyle factors and exercises so the the, the pelvic floor exercises that I'm going to explain to you today are you know if if you're if you have a sneeze and you pee your pants if you cough you pee your pants if you suddenly laugh and you you know you're having that sort of issue or you can sense that heaviness but there's nothing actually protruding yet so there's a earlier stages or you may have a you know you you may have prolapse in the family and you just want to avoid it we all really need to strengthen our pelvic floor particularly as we get older because as our estrogen levels drop as as we go through the menopause estrogen levels fall our connective tissue gets weaker our collagen levels fall so we are you know things move southwards 
and the pelvic floor or pelvic organs are supported by connective tissue but also by the muscles of the pelvic floor and they're, they're a bit like a diamond shape and then there's three sphincters so the sphincter around the urethra where you wee from the sphincter around the vagina and then the sphincter around the anus and um as we age unfortunately they all get a little bit saggier so but there are still things we can do that's why you know i'm the biggest proponent of daily activity daily movement daily exercise focused exercise cleaning the house going for a stroll is not going to do it once you're postmenopausal because you need to have a series of exercises that keep you in good alignment and other, your muscles atrophy if you don't use them they do atrophy so you do need specific sets of exercises in order to prevent that atrophy happening and in future videos i will go over exercises to avoid doing with prolapse and exercises that you can safely do with prolapse so what i have been learning or put, putting to practice over the last few days i want you to visualize your pelvic floor as a jellyfish you know when a jellyfish goes like that they don't make that noise, but that's that's how I visualize it happening. When you are sitting down with your legs straight, it's actually more difficult when you're sitting down. If you have a very weak pelvic floor, you may find this be more beneficial to lie, lie on your back and even uh, raise your knees because it's, it's gonna help to get the anatomy in the right area for you to do this. When I first started, I found it much more hard to engage the, the left, the right, the front and the back, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But when you're sat there, if you can do it sitting down, just be really mindful and just do that jellyfish action with your pelvic floor. Now, if you're starting to bob up and down, that means you're using your buttocks, you're using your bum muscles. The pelvic floor are completely separate. So you shouldn't be moving around at all when you're using your pelvic floor. You should, it should be just a movement. I'm moving, I'm doing my pelvic floor exercises now and you can't see me moving at all. So, but if you'll struggle with that, lie on your back, put your knees up, just get yourself comfortable and focus on that pelvic floor, that, that jellyfish movement. Now you might find that to begin with, you actually can't feel much at all. This is when you have to be really mindful about it. You have to visualize it happening. And it's almost like a brain link to the pelvic floor muscles. And do, please don't get frustrated with it. Just be really quiet. Breathe out, because when our pel when we breathe in, our lungs expand, which pushes our diaphragm down. So when we're pushing our diaphragm down, it's putting more pressure on our pelvic floor. But when you've ex when you've exhaled, when you've breathed out, your lungs are not going to be putting extra pressure down there. So just exhale and then focus on that jellyfish movement. And you should start. You might just find you think, oh, I think I felt something fire up then. That's it working. Just focus on that. And just if, if you're really at that stage where you can literally just just sense something happening, just do that for five minutes. Be really mindful, really quiet. Keep, you know, have a breath, breath in, exhale and then pelvic floor. Breathe in, exhale, pelvic floor. And do a few pelvic floor trials, jellyfish scoops while you've got, you know, you've exhaled. Moving on from that, as you become more familiar with how that feels and you become more confident, because a lot of it is a confidence factor, you're then going to start to feel that contraction much more effectively. It's no, it, this is not a quick fix. This will take time. Like any muscle, it will take time. But hang on in there because it does work. When you can strongly, you know, you can do your jellyfish quite happily with your knees in the air or just lying down on the bed or on the floor, however you want to do it. You can then, like I'm doing now, sit and you can focus on your pelvic floor. But the exercises I've been specifically doing, I do do them in bed. It's, it's just something I do morning and night. It's just when I remember to do it. And um, when you've actually got that jellyfish thing working well, now I want you to start to think about the front, the back and the sides of the pelvic floor muscles. You can isolate them. And this ties into my Instagram story that I did earlier about the fact that my left hand, when I'm skipping with the bod ropes that I'm using, it is hopeless. I also have a left hip that clicks a lot. I've clearly got some alignment issues in my body. I think I've always, always had them. I've always had a clicky hip on the left hand side. 
But when I was learning to do this pelvic floor thing, I find, found that to fire the left-hand side was so much harder than the right. And I found it easier to control the pelvic floor at the back than at the front. So clearly my front and my left need extra work. And the first time you do it, you're gonna be thinking, there's no way I can isolate, I, I can't do it. I don't know what I'm feeling. But again, that's when you have to be really mindful about it and just quiet and really focus on it. And you'll find that, you know, for instance, if you're trying not to pass wind, you know what that feels like when you're cl clenching the back, the back of the pelvic floor. When you're desperately trying to hold it, when you're bursting for the loo, for a wee, that's your front pelvic floor. But to do the left and the right, that is quite, that's quite challenging. But it's really important that you're able to give the, you know, to tweak them. Because it, it's essentially the pelvic, you know, the entirety is what we need strong. We don't just want like a strong back. Or a strong front we want we want balance within the pelvic floor but that also leads me on to saying that when your core is strong and when your alignment is good your posture is good when your glutes are firing in the right way as they should do one of the programs we released a couple of years ago was designed specifically to make the glute muscles the bum muscles fire properly because so many of us are sedentary we sit down for too too long just the way society is these days with work and stuff like that um a lot of our gluteal muscles are not being strengthened in the right way which means that other muscles overcompensate which means that we've become at, you know misaligned malaligned whatever misaligned i think yeah you know, we're just not in balance so by focusing on core exercises and i will go into more core exercises if you have prolapse that are safe for prolapse but if you're, you're somebody like me, you've had a baby, you've had the odd wet moment, um, you know, you can still continue with your exercises. But when you're doing things like crunches, focus on contracting your pelvic floor first before you crunch. And you want to have an exhale when you are contracting into that crunch. Same with when you're standing up from being seated or when you're go from seated to standing up or standing up back down. Focus on engaging your pelvic floor first before you make that movement. Get into the habit of doing it like that. And you, you will find that you're constantly then doing your jellyfish. You know, you're constantly contracting and you're you're going to be strengthening it then throughout the day too. Um, but then, so focusing mindfully on the front, the back and the sides. And you'll, you'll find that you're stronger in one or two areas than the other. But eventually by doing those exercises, you are going to strengthen your pelvic floor so that it's evenly balanced. And there are different types of exercises. There's three layers of muscles actually with the pelvic floor. So the first one is just to become familiar with that jellyfish contraction. Once you're able to feel that, what I would do is I would contract, exhale, contract and hold it for five seconds and then release. Take a breath, exhale, contract, jellyfish it, hold it for five seconds and release. I would do that five or 10 times. But after that, you're gonna do like, you're gonna do small contractions and then hold. So contract, 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 and hold it for three, five seconds and release. Contract, 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 hold it for three or five seconds and then release. And by doing that, you're then using the, the faster twitch muscles and you're gonna be engaging the different layers of muscles of your pelvic floor. And then the other one is just do jellyfish in, out, in, out, in, out, and do that for five or 10 times. As you get stronger, you'll be able to do more reps, but it's one of those things you, you have to keep working on. You do have to keep maintaining. It's like if you bicep curls, you're gonna have a nice bicep. As soon as you decide to stop bicep curls a month down the road, your bicep's gonna be looking fairly saggy. So, you know, you, it's something you do need to get into the habit of doing. But, you know, it's like brushing our teeth, it's maintenance. It's, it's so important that we become more familiar with having those pelvic floor exercises for our overall health, because it's a really vital part of our core. Um, you might have lower back, lower back pain because you've got a weak pelvic floor. When a, an important element of our muscular system is not working properly, other areas overcompensate, um, and you know you risk prolapse as well. There's 
prolapse is nothing negative or dirty about it. It's just a, an anatomical issue. There is no reason to be ashamed of any type of prolapse that you have, but there is a lot of shame around it, particularly, you know, as it's, it's, it's our reproductive organs. Um, so just, you know, I, I think if you can start to practice regularly, do your pelvic floor exercises regularly. Like I say, if you can't feel them yet, just be really mindful and you will start to feel something trigger. And from those little triggers, you can then start to work that towards a jellyfish. But be patient because it probably isn't going to happen overnight. But I think you'll find you'll notice an improvement quite quickly once you become more mindful of that. And you can use your hand when you're lying on the bed. Just literally put your hand between your legs and you can feel. So say, you know, you, you, here and you can feel when you're doing your jellyfish, you can feel the perineum and your pelvic organs moving up away from the hand. Like I say earlier, if you find that your buttocks are starting to clench or your inner thighs are starting to clench, just take a bit of time out and go back to it because you're not using your pelvic floor when that's happening. Um, people do say, oh, well, I, I just, you know, I stop having a, a wee halfway through. That's actually not supposed to be particularly beneficial. I'm not sure if it because it, it, it stops you, risks you not emptying your bladder fully or quite what it is. But I've heard quite a lot of contradictory evidence about that. So more important to just focus on your front pelvic floor muscles as part of your pelvic floor exercises morning and night. And like I say, when you're standing up and sitting down, get into the habit of engaging your pelvic floor first, holding in your tummy and then standing up. They're just very quickly, most of us have got a lax pelvic pelvic floor. It's not as strong as it should be. Some people have an, infl an, an overly tight pelvic floor, but that's not healthy either because it's an inflamed muscle. When you, people who've been through trauma uh, in abusive relationships, um, that is often a longer term issue to try and fix. And again, if that's the case for you, and you're probably not going to know which one it is, the chances are it's going to be the, the lax pelvic floor. But if you've had trauma, if you've had an abusive relationship, it might be that you need to do some mind work with either a therapist or some meditation, some gentle yoga in order to do some relaxing so that you can then start to build the pelvic floor up in a functional way. So just bear that in mind. But again, if you, if you fall into that category of person, I would get in touch with the pelvic floor physiotherapist because they will help you do the mindful exercises to release the tension, but then to strengthen the muscle. Because, you know, like if, if I held my fist like that all day, by the end of the day or in an, in a, by the end of an hour, it's going to be agonizing. And I'm, it's not going to be very useful. If I then had to write a letter, it's, my handwriting would be all over the shop. That isn't healthy. A healthy muscle contracts and relaxes steadily and easily and functionally. When there's too much tension in a muscle, it increases inflammation and inflammation is bad. We all know that. So um, I hope that's helped sort of clarify how to sort of become more aware of your pelvic floor, but also the fact that you can do a series of different types of exercises to increase your pelvic floor awareness but also your pelvic floor strength. And then in future ones of these series, I will be focusing on exercises that you shouldn't do with a prolapse, exercises that you can do. And um, I mean, one exercise, you know, if, if you're like literally climbing the walls because you've got a prolapse and you can't, you know, you've been told not to do the regular HIIT training and the cardio that you used to be able to do, uh, swimming. You, you can get an amazing cardio workout in the swimming pool. Um, front crawl, ideally, not breaststroke but swimming is perfect. Um, but you would ideally want to incorporate some weight training around that as well. With weights, if you haven't got a serious prolapse, you want to go for lighter weights and more reps. But again, it, re you, it really depends on how familiar you are with your body, how in touch you are with your body and the severity of your prolapse as to whether that would be a good alternative for you. Muscles when you've got, uh, sorry, Exercises when you've got your bum off the floor, so like glute bridges are great because they pull everything back. Uh, and you can you can do hip raises with weights. 
you can lift one leg up in the air and do glute raises with one leg up in the air and then move and obviously you can do lots of weighted exercises with your arms so glute bridges are fantastic if you have a, a prolapse or you know pelvic floor dysfunction but i will go into more exercises in the future um just one last one if you are love 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 your running try and jog uphill smaller steps and walk downhill walk backwards as well walking back people just think i'm crazy when they i say walk backwards it engages an entirely different set of muscles in a, you know, it engages your muscles in an entirely different way same muscles but in a different way also puts less uh, pressure on a prolapse and on your pelvic floor so downhill you want to be walking forward or backwards uphill you can depending on your prolapse and how you feel you can take smaller steps and run uphill if you if you need to do some jogging so i hope those tips help and um, if you've got anything that you want me to cover in specific you know particularly send me a private message and i will make sure i cover it in a future series so hope that helps get get jelly fishing um like i say either on your back or with your knees up in the air and have patience with it and if you can do it just focus on doing it more often morning and night work on your pelvic floor for just a few minutes it will make a massive massive difference to you i promise so hope that helps and catch you soon